good morning everyone i hope you guys are having a good morning a blessed morning every day that we wake up is a blessing every day that god allows us to live is a gift so we shouldn't take it for granted thank you thank you too thank you I had to stop and get me some breakfast and I absolutely do not feel like eating but I know I have to make myself eat something because I do not feel like eating at all but I have to eat with my medicine but like I was saying every day that God gives us that he allows us to wake up is truly a gift and that we should not take it for granted um what made me uh what brought this along is that my husband just recently had three deaths in his family within the last month and a half his aunt not his um she's like his great aunt she passed away and i could see if she was like older she's not older his if, um you guys don't know because i have never spoken but his mom my husband's mom had him at a really young age so his great aunt is more like you know she was a she wasn't that old yet and her death was suddenly. And then after she passed away, his cousin passed away, who was 40 years old. And he died of a heart attack in his sleep. He passed away. Very unexpected, very suddenly. We just went to his funeral yesterday. And then literally a week later to the day, another cousin of his passed away so and we're going to her funeral this weekend <laughs> excuse me guys my sinus isn't draining and um it's like we um as people we wake up every morning and we just go about our day and we don't even stop or pause for a second to give god praises and give god his due for allowing us to wake up we go to sleep at night just thinking and expecting oh well, i gotta wake up in the morning go to work do this do that but you some some of us are going to sleep and we're not waking up we're not waking up in the morning and his cousin that passed away whose um funeral we attended yesterday it was a very nice service it was sad um of course and it's hard when it's like somebody that it's like close to your age or your age and you because it really makes you think and gets your mind wondering like you know anything is, can happen this man was healthy he exercised he ate good you know he had some health issues or whatever that we didn't know about but other than that like you know you never would have thought that he would have had a heart attack right so we we never know what's gonna happen and we can't live our lives as if like it's just guaranteed because it's not and the bible says the life is a vapor you know we're a mist life is a mist you know be here today and it's gone tomorrow like it's not promised it's not guaranteed it's a gift from god and that gift is so that you can do his purpose and his will and complete your mission we are all here on purpose we are all here to complete a mission we are all here because we have a job to do and unfortunately the enemy doesn't want that to be done he wants to stop it at all costs he doesn't want you to have anything he doesn't want you to be able to do anything he doesn't want you to be able to save souls he doesn't want you to be able to complete your mission so everything that god gives you and preps you with to be able to complete your mission on this earth all the giftings that he gives you all the anointings that he gives you everything that he puts on you so that you can be effective in the body of Christ, the enemy wants to strip it from you and take it away from you. So that you can he can he can destroy you so that you can have nothing and so that you can complete your mission. You can't fulfill your purpose. Too many of us are out here dying too early. Too many of us are dying away before we can get the job done. And I refuse, I refuse as a woman of God and a strong believer to allow what God has given me to burden my children because what he has for us is for us and if we don't complete it then it goes on to the next generation And the, but they already have their mission they were born with a mission too so how is it fair for them to have to take on 
our responsibilities as well as do their own. We got to step up. We were all born for a time such as this. We were all born for a period, for a moment, for a time. And only God knows what that is, but he reveals it to you. When you seek him earnestly, he will reveal it to you, your purpose. And he prepares you for that and the spiritual. And that's why it's so important. Like, yeah, you watch uh, YouTube videos or you watch sermons or you read books or uh, listen to podcasts or whatever it is that you do that fills your spirit. But the only there's no one who can fill your spirit like God. There's no one who can fill you like the Holy Spirit. There's no one who can teach you like the Holy Spirit. And that's something I had to learn for myself. Because yeah, I was watching certain videos and stuff and uh, edifying myself through that because it was some good teachings and it helped me a lot spiritually. It built me up. And uh, God will lead you to what he wants you to watch and what he wants you to see. You know, everybody is not for everyone. And it's not for uh, uh, a long-term thing. It's for a season or a time period in which God wants to reveal something to you or to teach you something. That's what I'm learning for myself. I'm sorry about the sun. That's what I'm learning for myself. And I decided that I'm silencing every voice that's not the voice of God so that I can hear him clearly and do exactly what he wants me to do. I'm not going to allow confusion to come in because I'm listening to Peter, Paul, Jake, and Sam. Like, I'm not going to do that. And that's what I was doing. It's not like I was like doing everything or you know um but just allow myself to be open to too many voices it's just too much the only voice i need to hear from is god so i decided that i was gonna unfollow a lot of the people that i was following which wasn't even many people it's just over time it was a lot of people and i dwindled it down to just one person and then now i'm not even watching that person so i'm like if god wants to speak to me he's gonna speak to me and if he wants me to see something on YouTube or Facebook or it's whatever, he's gonna lead me to that and guide me to it. It's not for me to jump on Facebook or YouTube or whatever, whatever social media and just start watching, like binge watching certain people's videos or trying to keep up with everything they say because everything is not for you and everyone is not for you. God will have you in a place where you're in a season of training and he's been training me and in, it's been good and it's been uh, I've been hard headed sometimes a lot of times and so I don't even know how to explain it but in my heart right now how I feel right now is that I literally don't want anything but God like when he says seek me seek me and then I seek him earnestly like that's what I ooh, when I tell you that's what I want that's what I need like I only want God but at this point, that's all I want. He's the only one who can fill me. He's, he's the only one that can give me what I need right now, at this moment, at this time. Nobody else can do it. And so I just want to encourage everybody, man, just seek God earnestly. And, you know, don't wake up every morning like it's guaranteed. Don't wake up every morning like it's, it's owed to you. Because life is not owed to you. We, we didn't bring ourselves into this world. We didn't bring ourselves into this world. Only God did. We didn't help him create us. We didn't help him make a plan for us. We didn't help him give us our name before the earth was formed. Before we were even in our mother's womb. We didn't do that. He did it all on his own. What right do we have to wake up every morning thinking that it's not, if we just got to, I'm just, this is what I'm going to do. No. Wake up in the morning. Tell God, thank you. I love you. Be with me throughout my day. Carry me. Help me through. Send angels to surround me in my household. To follow us as we come in and as we go out. Go with me to work. Go with my children to school. Be with us wherever we are. If I'm at home, be with me at home. Man, take a couple minutes just to read your Bible. Sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes we got to get in where we fit in. Because this, this world allows us to have to be so busy this this world this earthly world you know takes away from what we need the most which is god which is our relationship with him but we got to just sit back sometimes and we got to make a sacrifice if you got to sacrifice an hour of sleep if you got to sacrifice going to bed at um, 11 o'clock instead of 9 30 or just so you can have a long time with god before you close your eyes every night we should be thanking god that we got through another day and every morning we should be thanking him that he allowed us to wake up i'm teaching my kids that so the first the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning thank god for giving me life you got that right thank god for letting me live you got that right and um 
I have slacked off a bit, a lot actually, with study time with my children, with praying with my children, because I allow life to get in the way. Oh, I'm tired. I have all this work to do. I set an alarm on my phone to go off every day at a certain time that says pray with your children. And every night that alarm would go off and I would ignore it and stop it and just continue on. I'm not ignoring it no more. I'm not going to put things in this world before God. I'm not. I'm not going to do it. God gave me this job. He put me in this place. This is my assignment for right now. This is what it is for right now. So why should I put this assignment before my creator? I'm not doing that. Because the only way that I can complete this assignment is with the strength and the wisdom and knowledge and understanding from my creator. It's taken me a long time to get to this point. I have truly changed the way that I think. And my mindset has truly been transformed. For real. I'm sorry guys, it is so bright out here. Look at all these geese, like, geese amaze me. Like, just the simple fact how they stay together. Look, this breakfast in my car is making my stomach hurt. I don't know if it's because it's making me feel like I'm about to vomit or if I'm hungry. Either way it go, it ain't no good feeling. It ain't, oh, somebody's there, okay. I thought I was about to park somewhere, but somebody's already parked there. Actually, I'm, I'm gonna go to my parking spot. I'm gonna park right here. I'm gonna go in and sign in, then I'm gonna come back out and eat my breakfast. Then I'm gonna go back in, like I always do, because I don't wanna eat in there. But um, I'm gonna come back out, and I'm gonna move my car so I can talk to you guys some more, because I just feel it in my spirit that I have some something that needs to be said. Like, the Holy Spirit has put something inside of me that needs to come out, and I don't want, I don't want to hinder the Holy Spirit, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So, like I was saying, it's like, every day that we wake up, you know what? Give me one second, guys, because my medicine is in the trunk of my car. Oops, turn it off. Wrong button. Okay, I am back like I never left. But, like I was saying, like, just experiencing what I've been experiencing this week with my husband. And it's not even just that. This is things that we have me and him together have thought about in the past is that you know we we not only need to get ourselves in order with god but we need to get ourselves in order with life in that sense meaning that yes we're young still and you know we're somewhat healthy or whatever but like i said tomorrow's not promised to anyone or anything can happen to anybody and is we need to have our, our our finances in order. We need to have our life in order so that if things happen to us, that our families are taken care of, our kids are taken care of. Like we have a plan for them and we have a plan for that. Because thank God that the ones who passed away, uh, one, her, I don't know, I think her son is almost grown or if he is grown. And then his cousin who passed away yesterday, then God, like his fiance, you know, she is you know, their kids are taken care of. Praise God for that. But like, you want to make sure your kids is okay. And I was thinking about that, like, who would I allow to raise my kids? Who would I want to raise my kids? Who is going to raise my kids the way that I would? And when I think about it, nobody, nobody can raise my kids, can love my kids, can take care of my kids the way that I can, no matter who they are. I don't care if it's my mom, my sister, my brother. I don't care who it is. No one is ever going to love your kids and take care of your kids and nurture your children the way that you do. God gave you those kids. Kids are a gift. Those kids are a part of your purpose and a part of your plan. And God gave those children to you. You know, we got to stop allowing the enemy to come in and take what God has given us. God gave us life. So how in the heck did he think he got a right to come in and take it? He don't have no authority. No, we don't know the day nor the time that God is going to call us home. We don't know how long he wants us to be here. We only know what he, uh, what he allows us to know. And praise God for the ones who he has warned and shown that, okay, I'm, it's time for you to go. Because you're done here. What I needed you to do has been completed here. And... What really had me going was last week, I want to say it was either last week 
or the end of the week before my son and i don't think i yeah i haven't been on my son came to me and we were sitting in the living room and he just came over to me and he just started crying and i'm like what's wrong and he was like i don't want you to leave me i don't i don't um i don't want you to go i don't want you to leave me i don't want to lose you and i'm like what's going on i was like i'm right here i'm like i'm not going anywhere i was like my time ain't done yet i said god ain't finished with me yet you know what i'm saying i'm like i'm still here and i was like why would you say that i said what's wrong why would you say that he was like <clears throat> i was just thinking and i was like when, when thoughts like that come into your mind you cancel and you rebuke those thoughts and you t you ask god to give you positive thoughts and then you pray for your mom and you pray that god will give your mom life and that you he will give her health and that the enemy will not be able to take her you pray for me and i said god ain't finished with me but at the end of the day we don't know when god is finished with us unless god literally comes to us and say okay i'm bringing you home i'm taking you home you don't know you don't know and if you are doing things in your life that is allowing the enemy to have authority to come in allowing the enemy to have a right because we have to give it to him because he don't just have it naturally it has to be given to him if you are allowing those doors to be open for the enemy to come in and tamper with what god has given you then you could it could be any day god gives us chances you know the enemy want to put diseases on us he want to try to do everything he can to shorten our days on this earth but it's our job and our responsibility to listen to christ to listen to the voice of the holy spirit so that we can fight that so that we can cancel it, so that we can live out our purpose and do what God called us to do. And it's sad. And I'm about I'm trying not to start crying, but I can feel the tears because it really hurt me to see my son not hurt. Like if something happened to me, my child would be devastated. I don't want to leave him like that. I don't want to leave my children at this young age. I don't want to do that. And I'm not going to allow the enemy to do that. I'm fighting for what's mine. My life that God gave me is mine. Yes, my life belongs to Christ, but it's mine. And the devil can't have it. You know, he can't have my kids. My son had an asthma attack on um, Monday. He had a football game. And after the game, he started coughing. And I recognized it as an asthma cough. But he kept insisting he was okay. And so I told him, Okay, I just made him take his inhaler or whatever. Sent him to school the next day. The nurse called me. He wasn't doing too good. His oxygen was okay, but he felt like his something was sitting on his chest. So I took him to the, hosp the hospital. And he was having a really bad asthma attack. I have been having to give him breathing treatments. I gave him breathing treatments before I took him to the hospital. But they weren't working. He needed a steroid to help open up his bronchioles. And... I canceled that spirit of death upon my child. The enemy has been trying to take my child with his asthma since he was two years old. My son was diagnosed with asthma and he's had a few asthma attacks. And I refuse and I always pray and I know that God is gonna get the glory because I have fasted for my son, prayed over my son, declared, decreed over my son. I have canceled. I have done everything that I know as a woman of God, as a Christian woman, led by the holy spirit to do to get rid of that infirmity of asthma and the allergies because he has really bad allergies off of my son a lot of things is like generational you know and they travel through the bloodline and so we break those generational bloodline curses that allow those things to come in but when when, when you don't see something your, your child being delivered and you know you're praying you know you're doing what you're supposed to do then you know that god is going to get the glory out of his life he is and um, I was asleep yesterday morning and I heard myself talking to my son in my dream. And I said, did you do your breathing treatment? And I think he had said no. And I said, you need to do your breathing treatment. And I said, I'm telling you for a reason. And I was halfway in between sleep, sleep and awake. And I almost let my son go out the door without doing the breathing treatment to school and because of what i heard in the spiritual that conversation between me and my son i knew god was telling me make sure your son takes that breathing treatment i'm telling you for a reason so i called my son i said go in the kitchen 
let's get you a breathing treatment before you go to school. Because I know for a fact the enemy had a plan to try to use that asthma against my son on that day. And my Lord, my God, my good God. My good God intervened and he canceled that by speaking to me. Had I not been aware, had I not been in tune, had I not paid attention, had I not known how God speaks to me, because I could have been like, wow, that was weird. I, I heard a conversation between me and my son. That was weird. I know what that means when God allows me to do that. He's telling me and he's showing me something. It's prophetic and it's a gift. And that he uses to communicate with me to help me to either intercede for other people or to warn other people about things and to help me in my life and my walk. Because when I tell you the cries that I heard and the cries that I hear from women who lose their children, it don't matter what age their child is. It's, I can only imagine that there's no pain worse than the pain of a mother losing her child so there could be no pain worse than the pain of our father in heaven losing his child and the one that he 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 breathed breath into our nostrils he filled our lungs with air every breath that we take is because of god god gave us this breath we don't breathe on our own our, our the air that we breathe is not even our air it's not even our air we are only sustained by god and at any moment, he can take that breath away. At any moment, it could be stolen away if we don't protect ourselves. I pray that this helps somebody. I really do. I'm sorry. I'm trying not to cry before I go up in this place. I'm trying not to get myself emotional. Kids are our, our kids are a gift. Our family is a gift. We can't take each other for granted. Yeah, it can be hard sometimes. Being a parent is hard. Being a wife is hard. Being a sister can be hard. Our auntie, whatever. Life can be hard. But there's nothing like what God has given you. Sit back and really think about your life. Really reflect on your life and everything that God has given you. Me and my husband had a discussion last night, you know, because of certain things that he's doing. And it's like, I told him, I said, see what you don't understand is that God has literally given you everything that you need. You are walking around looking and searching for something that you don't need. And, and while you're doing that, you're putting yourself in messed up positions and situations. He revealed the same thing to me. That's how I was able to recognize it in my husband. God has literally given us everything. And once I broke it down to my husband, he understood. He was like, you're right. You're right. He gave, he, I have everything that I asked for. So if we have everything that we asked for. God has given us everything that we need. What are we looking for? What are we searching for? Sit back and look at your life. It may not be a life of grandeur. You might not be a millionaire. You know what I'm saying? But look at, really look at your life. And, what, and remember what you prayed for. Remember what you asked for. Remember what you requested. Really look at it. And you and you you tell me if God has given you what you prayed for. And if you haven't gotten what God has prayed for, I mean, forgive me, Lord, you don't pray to nobody. If you have not gotten what you have prayed for, what you have asked God for, then you need to reevaluate what's going on in your life that he has not given you what you wanted. Because God will give you everything that you need according to his riches and glory. So if you have not gotten everything that you've asked for and prayed for, then either you are outside of God or you are, you're not in the position to receive it. Another thing I realized is that we can be literally in the midst of what he gave us. We are literally in the midst of what he gave us. We are literally living and experiencing and reaping what he gave us and we don't even recognize it we don't understand it and we don't appreciate it because we we can't see it we don't recognize it we're too caught up in everything that's going on oh my gosh these bills oh my gosh this job oh my gosh but we're not understanding 
We're not understanding because we're letting everything around us fog us, blind us, so we can't see. But when you really open your eyes up, when God really reveals it to you, when you really see it like, man, what am I looking for? What am I doing? The problem is that he gives things to us and we don't recognize it because we don't know how to manage what he gives us. We don't know how to take care of what he gives us. We don't know how to nourish and nurture what he gives us. So we can't see that we can't see it. My husband used to tell me that his mom always told him, you can't see the forest from the trees. Meaning that you can't see something that's right in front of you. You blind. And that's how we be in this life. We be like, Lord, please bless me with the finances to make sure I can pay my bills. And he gives you a job. But the reason you can't pay your bills is because you're mishandling your finances. You're buying stuff that you don't need to be buying. You're overspending. Or you, you, instead of paying bills, you out there going out and hanging out and buying clothes. I've been there. I've been there. God has always made a way. When I was down to my last penny, when we didn't have anything, because we have not had any, we, it's been times, okay? I will tell you, me and my husband had a time where we were literally splitting a McDonald's combo meal because that's all we had enough money for. And back in this time, I was smoking and he was smoking, but I didn't smoke cigarettes. I was smoking black and mouths. We had enough to split a McDonald's combo meal and to get me a, a pack of black and mouths and get him a pack of cigarettes. That was all the money we had. And we was in the middle of a transition of a major move. And we did not get any finances until after the move. We had to fly to a totally different country with nothing. I got there and didn't know how I was going to feed my kids. But God always makes a way. When I was down to nothing, God always made a way to make sure my kids always and we always have what we needed. That we always have what we need. We have to stop taking for granted the things that he gives us. And we have to start allowing God to manage our lives. Okay, we say, Lord, you're my creator. You're my sustainer. You are my provider. Well, if, if he's all of that, if he's the manager of your life, if he's all of that, if he's the governor of your life, if he's all of that, then how come we're not listening to him? How come we're not doing what he's telling us to do when he's telling you to save money? Why are you out there spending money? When he's telling you to see into a ministry or to, to um, donate or to help a family or help a person, why are we ignoring it? You know, like this, my husband does this thing. And the, I'm, I'm proud of him because he recognized the sin and he recognized the demon. He says that when I get a lot of money, that spirit of greed be coming hard because I get a lot of money and I act different. I said, you do. You turn into a different person. He's like, yeah, he's like, I always think like I'm better than other people and I'm not. And no, he's not. He recognized it. You know what I'm saying? God is not going to give you more if you can't handle what he, the little that he's giving you. How do you expect him to give you much if you can't handle a little? Like, and we like, Lord, we want more. Well, how much is, how much is enough? When are you satisfied? Lord, give me more. Lord, give me more. Lord, give me more. Lord, I need more. Why? Be satisfied with what he has given you. Learn how to manage what he has given you. Appreciate what he has given you. And allow him to determine if he wants to give you more. All you need to do is be obedient, be focused, and have your feet planted on the firm foundation. Spread his word. Teach his word. Do what you called to do and let God take care of you because he will. Man, read Psalms 91. What does it say? He's not going to allow our feet to stumble. He's not going to allow us to, to, to trip over a rock. He's not going to allow us to fall. You know, like, Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why do we want? We want everything that we see. We want the new car. We want the nice house. We want the new shoes. We want to go to Bath and Body Works and get all the perfumes that are on sale. You only have, this is one body. How many perfumes do you need? Like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> I'm talking to myself right now. I love Bath and Body Works. I love the candles. I love the body sprays, but they're sitting there building up dust because I have maybe two, 
maybe two or three that are my favorites that I wear on a daily basis and the other ones are just there when I felt like, oh, maybe when I, I just want to, oops, okay, maybe, um, some of them haven't even been used. And here I am looking to see, oh, what they got on sale? What, what do they got body sprays on sale? Do they got candles on sale? What, what do they have on sale? I'm at the point now, I'm not buying no Bath and Body Works candles. Them candles are expensive. That's that's gas in your tank, okay? And they're raising the prices. The body sprays, the lotions, everything's going up. <laughs> like, I can't even use the body washes and stuff like that because my skin is so sensitive. You know what I mean? So, but I like to smell good. And things that smell good, they, like, make me feel good. So, I like, I like good scents. But at the same time, I don't need that many. I don't. I find myself, I'll give some to my daughter. I'll buy some for my daughter. I'll buy some for me. My husband will go and surprise me. He'll buy me a bag. He'll come home with like six or seven bodies. I'm only one person. Why do I need all this body spray? I don't really care for perfume. Perfume tends to be too strong for my nostrils. I like subtle scents. So I might have a couple bottles of actual perfume, but body sprays, I have to stay with it. And that's, it's, it's, you know, we have to learn to recognize what we are overindulging in. I love to go out to eat. I'm the first person who be like, let's go out to eat. I love it. It's, a, it's, it's something that I enjoy doing. However, it's expensive and I know how to cook. So if I know how to cook and not just that, that it's easy to follow a recipe. If you can read, you can follow a recipe. All you just need is the tools. You need the measuring cups or, you know, the measuring spoon, whatever you need. And the ingredients, that's all you need. You can follow a recipe. Why do y'all keep going out spending $50, $60 when you can be at home cooking? I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to myself. We want to give our kids the best of everything. Not knowing that we are giving them the best of everything. Your kids have a roof over their head they have water to take a bath and brush their teeth they have soap to keep themselves clean they have toilet paper they have the basic necessities they have electricity they have clothes they have a washer and dryer to have clean clothes they have video games they have books they have why do we always feel like we're not doing enough? Why? And that's, I'm talking to me once again, because my husband had to tell me this. I'm a good mom, but I beat myself up a lot because I feel like I could be better because I don't recognize the good mom that I am. We do the best that we can do to the capability that we can do it. That's what we do. We need to stop putting ourselves at a high level that is, is an impossible to obtain. Like no matter how good of a parent you think you are, you always feel like you can be a better parent. There's always something you can do better. We have to understand that we can only do what we can do. That's it. And if your kids are happy and they're good, then what are you worried about? Do they have money in their lunch accounts every week? Okay. Are they eating every day? Okay. Do they have clean clothes every day? Yes. Are they healthy? Yes. Do they have basic needs and necessities met? Yes, they do. What are you upset about? What are you trying to prove? And who are you trying to prove it to? <laughs> we go through this life with this false expectation that we have to be the best of the best of the best of everything. Everybody's running this rat race. Everybody wants to be in competition. Everybody wants to keep up with the Joneses. Last night I had to teach my kids the definition of the word covet because we were praying and we were reading these prayers. And I said, what does the word covet mean? Can you tell me what the word covet means? And I explained to them, it means to be jealous. It means to want and desire something that belongs to somebody else that somebody already has. No. If you see somebody with a nice pair of shoes, like my son, he, he likes Jordans. You can't always get Jordans. You know why? Because Jordans is expensive. You and an 11-year-old child. And I don't feel like you're responsible enough to take care of them shoes. And that you need a $100 pair of shoes. Okay? I have a limit. Now, sometimes I want to splurge and do something nice. I might surprise and wear a nice pair of shoes. Other than that, you're going to get what I can afford, right? But he'll see somebody with shoes. And, of course, he's at that age. And he's like, oh, well, Jordan, how did Jordan get all these Jordans? I don't know. 
his mama sacrifice something so that she can afford to keep her son in those shoes because guess what food is more important than shoes do you want to be hungry or do you want a new pair of shoes what you want <laughs> for real and that's what life is really coming down to you know what i'm saying like i don't even want to get into it you know i tell my daughter like she can she beats herself up sometimes if she gets a, a bad grade or because she's used to getting good grades and and a bad grade of her is like a c and i'm like don't be jealous of anyone who's doing better than you and getting better grades than you i said i told them we should be happy for each other we should we should be happy that <coughs> excuse me that they're doing good and that they have nice things because we know that what God has for one, he has for all. And if they're not getting what they have rightly and justly, you shouldn't want it anyway. Because it's temporary. And what's done in the dark will surely come to the light. I had to learn that. When I was in school, I was highly, highly jealous of people. And... And it wasn't just like I wanted to be like people or I wanted to have people. I had I be like I wanted to have what they have. I mean, I had really low self esteem when I was in high school. I had really uh, I had self identity issues when I was in high school. It took me until I was a young adult to 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 really embrace myself and who I was. I looked in the mirror every day and I thought I was ugly. I thought there was nothing pretty about me. I had to train myself up and teach myself that I was pretty. I remember I was in church one day. I was at high, in, still in high school, and the pastor was prophesying over me. He said, stop comparing yourself to other women in your family. Because I would do that. Why am I so big? Why are they so small? How come I gain weight like this and they so skinny? Like, God made me how he made me. He made you how he made you. Be happy with, with, how, with how God made you. There's so many things going on in this world that cause our children to have low self-esteem, that cause them to have identity issues because they feel like they have to live up to an expectation of society. Oh, all this makeup on their face, fake eyelashes, fake hair, fake nails, fake breasts, fake butts, uh, all these clothes. Like, who are you? You have covered yourself up so much you don't even recognize you and not only do you not recognize you god don't recognize you because you don't did so much to your body you have changed what he created so much and altered what he had created so much that he don't even recognize his child no more all because of what society is saying we should be looking like and how we should be dressing what we should be doing i done seen so many beautiful women Beautiful women messing up their face and their bodies with plastic surgery. Having children and their kids don't even look like them because they have changed their features so much. Your child, your child don't look nothing like you. You can't say, oh, my baby looks just like me. No, she don't. She don't look like you. And not only are women having these issues, but men are having these issues too. Don't think that men don't have identity issues. Yes, they do. Getting fake muscles and stuff put in there. For what? Be happy with what God give you. Work hard if you want to do better. Like, why do we make this life harder than what it has to be? The devil. Satan. The enemy. Lucifer. We give him too much credit. We give him too much room. <sighs> you know what? I got to eat this food. It's been a like half an hour. I got to go in to work. And I'm going to have to take this food with me. But I pray that you all have a blessed day. I do. And I pray that anyone who is struggling with anything that I mentioned, that God will be your deliverer. That you will see your worth. That you will see that you are doing the best that you can do right now at this time. And if you know that you can do better, then you can sacrifice that time to do better. Five minutes out of your day ain't much. When you're in the car, that ain't much. Park your car in your parking lot or in your garage or in your driveway and sit in your car for five or ten minutes before you go in the house when you know your kid's about to be on you. Lord, I'm going to take this five, ten minutes to talk to you. I just want to thank you, Lord God, for being a part of my day, for helping me get through this day by your strength, Lord God. I thank you for the joy that you have placed in my life, for the family that you have given me. I thank you for the ability to go out there and make the money that I need to support my household, support my children, Lord God, and, so, and be an active part of my community. I thank you, God for being with me and keeping me safe from harming from the schemes of the devil 
for protecting me from these witches and these warlocks. I thank you, God. Now, as I go into my house, Lord God, I ask that you would give me peace, patience, and an understanding to be able to deal with my children in the way that you want me to deal with my children. Teach me, Lord, how to be a better mother, how to be a better wife, how to be a better friend, how to be a better sister, how to be a better, a better child of God. Teach me how to love like you. Teach me. And he will teach you. So I pray for all my sisters and brothers in Christ. That God be with you. That you are blessed. Know that you are blessed. Know that you are favored. Know that you are loved. Know that you have purpose. Know that you have a mission. Know that your life is not in vain. Know that someone loves you and cares about you. Know that you are a good mom. You are a good sister. You are a good brother. You are a good husband. You are a good wife. Know that you are. And if, that, if no one loves you and appreciates you, God loves you and appreciates you. And he sees your every pain and your every struggle. And he hears your every cry. And he is the comforter. Turn to him and call on his name. That's all you have to do is call on the sweet name of Jesus and he will be there. When you have no one, he's always there. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Don't let him tell you what you're not. Start commanding what you are. What you are in Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shalom.